Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are in Listeria Wars, a title that has been entered into the Game Development World Championships. All links below, you should check out their competition and the various projects that have been entered into it. This is one of them, Listeria Wars, and it is made by a single person. It is uh, entered into the indie category, of course, with that. And it seems to be their, with their first game. Um, might not be, but um, it's, it's probably one of the first. What is interesting about this is, um, well, I, I saw it and I found the theme extremely interesting. It's uh, a body defending itself with the immune system against intruders, as in bacteria and viruses and all that good stuff, right? That you don't want to have in your stuff. Um, but it commercially completely failed. A few months after its release, or a few, like two, <laughs> um, you can see here, Steam store page grabbed, only five reviews. That usually translates into only a few sales. And that is, uh, of course, very unfortunate for the creator, but what we are going to do here is to delve into the game, check it out, and see why that might be. Because the theme that I discovered back then when I was interested in it um, certainly seemed very strong. Well, I guess first up, the menu soundtrack is killer. Uh, it's really damn good. Uh, chip tunes, but really nice. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, go and start a game. Uh, let's delete this. I have played to day nine, not uh, the content creator day nine. Of course, that is an absolute legend. Uh, what is his name? Sean Plot. Yes. So anyway, start a new game. Um, let's start on day one and get right into it. So calendar overview. That's all right. And you get these little pixel arty stories <laughs> and i think they made for an amazing uh trailer there and it's it's part of what really sells the game at a surface level and you did see the pixel on looks good so there we go we've arrived at cell membrane and now we are supposed to defend him we have uh oh this is the tutorial we do have a um, pretty simple control scheme of uh, just dragging your units to the enemy and uh, trying to defend them, uh, or trying to defend the body, which is this this barrier over here to the left, uh, from um, stuff getting there. We have a certain number of hit points, and of course they are not supposed to go below um, uh, below zero. Because then you you are having some some minor issues, uh, some bigger minor issues, and uh, what is happening here? As you can see, we have some slow units, some ranged units there. Um, that's all pretty good. Can you fire, please? Yes. So let's get some more units there. Very simple kind of. Um, Oh man, that took me way too long to remember. Tug of War games, yes. So, um, it's kind of a tug of war slash tower defense game kept on just one wide lane where you have no s distinct separation and your towers are not immune from anything. So it's more of a tug of war than it is a tower defense. All right, so you can see the day progress slowly there and more and more units are spawning and you, you are getting some um, some more help from your, your mana and um, spawning new units. It's all kind of standard fare. So, um, so far, so good. The controls are um, pretty intuitive. And as you are getting to these checkpoints, um, you see that you're, you're getting some some different screens and such for how the situation changes. They don't seem to be relevant, it's just for, well, basically making it a little bit more visually appealing. Um, the pixel art is good, I like it. So, the first day, done. Ugh, drops into bed, one day he survived. Okay, so, uh, upgrades are available. And this is uh, pretty standard, this too. And you're already probably seeing where this one goes. Maybe uh, there are too many things that are too standard. <laughs> we shall see. If what you have seen so far very much reminds you of the good old times on Congregate or something where you were playing browser games for free, 
I wouldn't blame you, because this all seems like it. A very well made such a game, but um, as in presented. Maybe not from a mechanical standpoint, but that is something that we're going to see. Speaking of mechanics, these upgrades is something where I instantly notice something. Let me tell you. So our little units have stats, right? And you can see these stats right there. 10, 12, 20 and 10, 30, 50. So if I hover over these buttons to upgrade them, there are five levels. We can see how much we get. This one started out at 8 and I can upgrade it to 10, 12, it's level 3. The costs are um, linearly increasing for each level and the effect size that you're getting is just uh, constant. So the costs are escalating uh, while the benefits stay constant. That's a good way of simply balancing things. But let's take a look here. It's like, um, if we go if we go here, 30 plus 2, two more defense. It doesn't say how defense works, but two more defense is basically nothing if you already have 30. Plus 3 speed seems very little there as well. So does it really make a big difference? If we put 5 in here, we would gain 15 speed. That is an increase of, let me grab the calculator real quick. No, I don't need the calculator real quick because uh, if we make this on a base of 100, that would be just a 30% increase. Um, so yes, you gain 30% speed for the whole upgrade series. For a, for a unit that, yeah, 30% speed, that would be nice. That's a nice bonus. Um, but is it absolutely crucial and game-changing? No, does it need to be? No, not really, but it needs to be feeling significant. Otherwise, it's a mechanic that doesn't really matter. Same with the attack. The attack seems to be better. You see the difference here. If I invest just one point into attack, that's 20% extra damage. That's big. So what I'm basically noting here is that the upgrade system seems A, extremely simple, B, not very rewarding, and C, eh, imbalanced in the sense of that there are certain ones that you need to grab instead of others um, because otherwise it's just wasted. So let's get to the next day. Um, every day has its <laughs> its little intro challenge. Oh, uh, rather intro. No, no washing hands. Ah, oh, sorry. Just uh, s lick it off here. So there are a few new enemies. So for now, we only have these two units. There was no choice uh, on what... Oh, 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 that, that is... Wow, they are dying really fast. Um, there's no real choice on how to start, but uh, it's uh, part of a tutorial also, so... And you need to get used to the game slowly. All right, almost through day two. Uh, just our standard barrier and uh, some archers in the background, basically. Um, so one thing that I do notice is that the, once you have established a foothold in these, it doesn't seem like it's overly challenging anymore. And there we go. A successful day lies down and uh, <laughs> I definitely need to show you definitely need to show you uh, what happens if you fail but we're going to get there new unit unlocked okay um, doesn't tell us what that would be nice to see um, immune cells there macrophage all these units that you have do have different characteristics. And this one, for instance, eats the, the debris of um, of remains of both friendlies and unfriendlies. And um, you can charge yourself up to become uh, extra powerful and then they go and boom, explode on the enemy. So that seems quite powerful for uh, horde enemies. And we are on day number three. Let's see what he does today. Oh. He's actually washing himself. What? What is this? Um, let's see. Standard stuff first. Let's get an archer in here as well. I'm just calling them by their um, like archetype instead of uh, what, what they actually are. It's much easier to ha handle for both you and I. 
Uh, oof, this is looking a little rough. Uh, yeah, okay, fire at them. Fire at them. Come on. Uh, ow. Oh, okay. Yeah, now you... Oh, what? 50% <laughs> off. Okay. Well, that's looking good. Let's see. Uh, let's use this opportunity uh, to fail. I'm not going to uh, build any more. And let's just see what happens if we fail. Because that is actually quite cute. So, oh. Mm -hmm, 40 health remaining. And uh, now this is going to get worse. Oh, you see that? You see that? Oh, 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 oh. Oy, oy, oy. There's, there's some accidents ha happening already. There. There we go. That was um, not how his day was supposed to go. Um, a, a bad case of the runs in his office chair. Right. But uh, we can try again. So I have my little uh, debris eating boys out here and they are doing a good job so far it looks like yeah yeah oh he's supercharged now that's that's good just need to make sure that my uh, little nommy nommy boys here are going around and oh we can explode this one right boom okay yes uh, going around and eating eating a lot of healthy food so uh, Th there we go. We've made it to two thirds, and there's a lot more to grab here. Come on, eat it all up. Suck it up, boys. Oof. Yeah. Explosions. Um, probably need a few more. No, not of these. Of these. Uh, they are supercharged now, though. So that's good. Let's send them in. Send them in. Explode everything. <laughs> there you go. And here. Come on, eat it up. There. There's a bunch of it. Ah, right, we made it. Alright, so this day we have collected a few more of these, uh, whatever that is, mutational things. Or probably like immune system adaptation points or something. Um, so we might want to invest those back into our stuff. Uh, macrophage, uh, do we want to get something like 8-ish percent extra defense? Or do we want to get, uh, what, oh, that's like four, 16, 16 percent or so of extra attack. I don't know. They, uh, it's hard to tell. There's very little feedback on this as well, because what you have to consider with this in terms of balance is overkill. If normal enemies take two hits to kill, then um, putting points into this uh, is basically worthless uh, until you can one-shot them. And uh, that means we could potentially waste a lot of points here, while the enemy killing you might be slower and thus um, like going from taking four hits to kill one of your dudes to um, five hits, that makes a larger difference. But you can't really tell here. There's no way of really gauging how good this is apart from speed. I don't know what speed is. Is this also attack speed? Because if it would be, then I can see this one mattering more. If it's like movement speed plus attack speed, then yeah, I can see that smaller increases here would be reasonable. Oh, here you go. Oh, he's, ah, oh, yeah, up late. Oh, well, that doesn't look healthy, what I spotted there. Uh, these are slow boys, so maybe we can get get by by just placing archers properly. Uh, there are some speedy boys though. There, yep, yeah, gotta gotta get them. Yes. Uh, should I wait? Yeah, I wait for that. Now we have some serious firepower there already. Oh, 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 oh! They are they are eating up. Uh oh, uh oh! Come on, kill him, kill him, kill him! Yeah, we got no. Stop, stop it. There you go. Oh, that's a lot. Ouch, ouch, ouch. These all need to become, like, supercharged. Yeah, okay. Come on. Come on. Eat it all up. Eat it all up. There's more of it. Okay, so there seems to be an interesting uh, concept here of that you 
you have to try and upgrade your dudes with the remains of enemies and your own and then send them into the battle because that makes them more efficient that way so there's a lot to to manage here um, well a lot and a lot it's uh, it's not overwhelming in any capacity but um, certainly some things some minor tactics to think about which makes it more interesting that's good All right, made it to the end of day four. So now we're skipping up uh, upgrades and go to day five. Oh, oh, fell out of bed. That's a good start. Oh, what is what is this? Uh oh, someone is laying eggs. I don't appreciate that. Oh no, there's something going through. Uh oh, oh, uh, oh, wow. Okay, that hurts. So there's no mass select or anything, which makes the larger battles a little clunky. Um, more clunky than they need to be, really, it feels like that. Um, but yeah, so if I could just like fr draw a frame around something and then, then send them off to their deaths, that would be feeling a little bit more direct and efficient. Oh, yep, that is that is a big number of enemies that is coming at me, and they're breaking through. No, 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 stop them. Stop them. Oh, that's too many. They, they, ooh, oh, no, we died there. No, we didn't die, but, I mean, that, that was... Let's, let's call it a minor accident in the subway. Um, and that gives me something to talk about as well. <laughs> Not accidents in the subway, mind you, but... I have no experience with those. Or do I? I hope not. Um, but there is something that is very important in Tug of Wars, uh, Tug of War games, and those some of those titles back in the day on Congregate and the likes did master those or at least came close to it, and there are very good examples of it. So basically what you have is a... Um, when it, when it tilts against someone, that it rapidly devolves into instantly losing or winning. And that tends to not be good gameplay, because there is no chance to recover in any way. It's like a mistake that you've made, where you, for a certain amount of time, don't see the consequences of it. And then all of a sudden, boom, you lost. And you're like, oh, uh, wh why did that happen now? Um, and there's no coming back from it. On the other hand, like we saw in the very first scenarios, it was like, yeah, okay, we are basically just stacking dudes and there's no way the enemy would be able to break through. So one thing to think about in terms of game design there is that you have um, a built-in comeback mechanic that as you... Oh, Dota is an excellent example. Just a Dota genre. They have usually have that nailed down quite quite a bit if you are breaking through with your heroes through the first tower or something the second layer tends to be so difficult that you can't really take it on until you have recovered also the enemy um, you can have mechanics where the enemy actually gets a little bit stronger as you are uh, defeating them so you have to be decisive in your moves instead all right, so let's start out. Let's see if we can start out with archers, and then place um, little guys. This should be some good shots. Yeah, we do need to protect them here, and uh, maybe. Yeah, okay, okay. Come on. Yeah, okay, they got them. Now, can we get more archers to snowball in efficiency? That might be what we need here. Okay, that was just about on the cusp there of... Um, no, oh, stop. Don't, don't kill one of my dudes. That would be bad. Come on, kill him. Can we, can we get away with just one more of these? There's a bit of a pause here. That might be what saves us. Come on, kill, kill him. Good. 
And now we can get these. And now we have a pretty solid basis here, I would say. As long as I stay back, I should still retain efficiency. Uh, we can get some more of these, just body shields. And you need to become a superhero. Oh, 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 one breakthrough there. So I'm going to spread them out a little bit more and pull them back too. So now I have just standard row of defense, body shields, and behind it, lots of archers. Now we have built up so much goo here. Come on, can you can you eat it? Yes, okay, they can. We are almost done though. This was the uh, what was needed. It was quite close on the edge, I have to say. Could have failed this one again. But this was the way to go. So we have a new unit unlocked. Let's see what it is. The journal um, that is here. T helper cell. Again, quite nicely themed. So it's basically um, allowing your units to pick up these little yellow uh, information dots and then grab them and give them to the T helper cells. And then they are going to upgrade you so that you can defeat those threats better. And uh, that's cool. So basically a unit that upgrades others if you grab resources from the battlefield. These, if they are only helpers, they and not actually attacking, then why would we upgrade them? As you can see, I have a lot of problems with this system already. You know what? And I'm saying, you know what? All right, <laughs> too much. But um, it seems to me like this project would have benefited from an actual systems designer. There you go. And we made it through day six. Maybe you just need to let slip some of those early enemies. Um, that might not be a good fight to take. It wasn't. No, okay. As you see, that I think this is a perfect example of uh, what I just wanted to, what I was just thinking about, and uh, that is the the snowballing, right? The snow. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, he just pooped his bed and vomited in, into it as well. That's that's a nice ending to it. These days, or rather challenges, missions, or whatever scenarios, whatever you want to call them, that are sequentially lined up do feel like puzzles instead of actual tactical battles. You have to know what, you have to have a certain build order in order to complete them. And there's not that much strategy involved in it because there is a solution to it. Um, and that can be perceived as difficulty, but I don't think it is. It doesn't make the game more challenging. Oh, rather, it makes the game um, more difficult but less challenging because you are just trying to find the combination that works instead of um, having a good sense for the gameplay the mechanics how things interact and so on you also need that um, obviously because it's like right at the edge the thin margins even on the early days here um, but I, I don't think that kind of gameplay works for a game like this Okay, there they are coming. That's uh, going ex to explode everyone. That was quite nice. Now we need to somehow grab all these. Come on. Give, give me my little... Oh, they are disappearing too. Okay. No um, helper points for you. But there they are a few. Okay, come on. Don't die. Yes, yes, that's looking good. Now we just need a doctor. Come on, kill him. Come on, kill them, Marches. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, give them all. Yeah, now we have some stronger dudes. So uh, it really looks like a build order thing here. Yeah. yeah. Now this is getting a little stronger. Oh, wow. What is going on with these enemies? They're kind of slowed or something. Uh, can we grab these very quick? Drop them off here. Upgrade some more of our dudes.
Oh, I can explode these, I guess. Come on. Go in there. Just plop them. Oh, yes. <laughs> Grab all of them. Come on, don't engage. Uh, how can I make them disengage? That is something that would need to happen. Look, come on. Get, give them all the juice. All right, now it's just cleanup time. And we have it. Yeah, I really would like to drag a, a frame around these. Controls are very simplistic. Ah, they are, they continue. <laughs> they just continue to uh, spawn new ones. All right, let's kill them. Oh, now we have actual um, threats here. Oh wow, they hurt. Go on, get rid of them. Uh, Range threats. That's a little nasty. We need speedy boys. Speedy upgraded boys, but you can't get them read. Oh, there! No, no, there we have them. Okay, come on, come on. Can we? No, don't, don't get. Ah, they get killed so quickly too. This is just a. They're just firing so quickly at me as well. Hmm. So three upgrades. Get through there. Get through there. We just have to... What? Hey, I, I need to collect some more firepower. Alright, it looks like they can't progress. So now they just sit out there and, and shoot. And we can mount a massive offense. Well, of course, we can't send them all at the same time. Which is uh, reminding me, giving me bad back, uh, flashbacks to Dune 2. Played or was... Yeah, Dune 2 played on the Sega Mega Drive, where you had to select every single unit and send it there. So what I did back in the day was basically stagger the units, like this, and then I would send these, then these, then these, then these, and then I would, well, the stagger needs to be worked out, right? But uh, then I would be able to get all the units there at the same time. And another unit has been unlocked. Let's take a look. It's the T-Killer Cell, little viking. Okay, let's upgrade the shit out of them. Here, here we go, uh, back and back and upgrades. So this one, 1842. Yeah, they can take a beating it looks like. The mission that is coming up now is the one where I got stuck because it was basically a puzzle that was involving the T-Killer Cell and I couldn't exactly figure out what it was. So let's see if um, this approach works. It is toilet time. Nope. Nope. No washing hands for you, good sir. It just smells a little on the bad side. They cost 32. Let's place them here. That should be should be all good. Wow, they are a little aggressive. He's almost dead already. Uh, gi give, it, give that to them. Wow, they, they are fast. They're really fast. Come on, get back! Get back! You idiots! You f ah. <laughs> That was super stupid. Okay, there, there you go. <sighs> if they can't disengage, you are going to poop your pants. All right, let's jump into there. Oh, there, that, that, don't. Stop it. No, you idiot. Okay, now they are upgraded. Uh, well, yeah, they don't defeat these and then they die. Yeah, okay, another poopy here. There you have it. Um, I think you can quite clearly see what I mean with that issue of this being a puzzle. I fully trust the game that there is a good solution to this one. It is just not very fun to figure that puzzle out. Because it, on the surface of it, the game seems like a tactics and strategy game. Because it has this upgrade system, right? Where the upgrades obviously don't really matter that much. Um, and then um, that would point to that you can have a little bit of your own playstyle. It doesn't seem to be the case. You have to solve the puzzle the way the developer wanted. That works really well in puzzle games, but not really tug-of-war games. So I think this is where the game falls flat in terms of gameplay. And then in terms of game mechanics, 
and systems, well, there is not much to it, unfortunately. The upgrade system is extremely barren and uh, not balanced and also uh, not interesting. And then the um, different missions are also not that engaging. The um, theme, on the other hand, really is. Oh, I really like that. But you can really see where this one doesn't go beyond looking good on surface. So what could be changed in order to turn this game into a pretty good one? Let me... Well, let's, now let's talk uh, uh, something that would increase the scope a lot. But I believe that if you went out there and changed this game to be a much larger scale, even if you have these mechanics where your units are more or less um, uh, partially autonomous, right? But you make the scale much larger, let's say 10 times the battlefield size, and you're much more zoomed out, and you actually have some waves where the enemy is trying to flank you and all, all that kind of stuff, where you have more deliberate movement of troops and larger contingents of troops that are fighting it out, I think this would be way more engaging and um, that combined with an upgrade system that makes more sense uh, and is uh, more balanced, I think that will play quite well. So much larger battlefield, much longer so that you can plan ahead and you can see threads arrive from a longer distance away. So um, I think it's an interesting title and quite impressive for a one-man project, especially in terms of the visuals and the theme. The music is great too. But then the gameplay, Congregate Days has seen better than these. And why would you pay almost 10 euro for a game like this? The answer is you wouldn't. And people have decided they don't. Not a surprise really when you look at it. But nonetheless, I think it is um, very illustrative to take a look at a title like this and uh, see where it goes wrong. Because you can't only take a look at games where everything has gone right or most of the things have gone right and say like, yeah, this is, this is like all games are. They're not. And game making games is mega hard. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little look at Listeria Wars. And um, I shall see you guys next time.